And the most important ability of all is what? The ability to believe that you can do it. The ability to believe that you can do it. How is that not the most important aspect of the next however long you're alive? The thing that I've got from James and Damon is that really reflect on it tonight and tomorrow and hopefully watch the videos back as soon as I can. They're just in another level. Like, it's, it's just, I'm staring at them both. Like, what a privilege it is to be two or three feet from them both. I'm just looking in their eyes, like mesmerized at the belief in themselves, the way that they think, the way that they talk, the family. Fuck them. Like, if they've got opinions on me, I'm not interested. Don't take criticism from people that you wouldn't take advice from. What do they all say to you now? I can fucking tell you what they're all saying to James now. Can I come with you? Can I come with you? Can I come with you on that flight to Iceland the next time you speak? Can I come with you to London the next time you speak in there? Can you get me access to this? This is what they'll be saying. You know so-and-so. When you go and do that thing, can you get me a picture? Can you get me this? Can you get me the other? The fuck is 10 years ago? They'll have been questioning every single thing that man was doing. When I watched that, I said it to Natalie straight away. Look at this. This is our journey. This is our life. She pulled, it, pulled him on it straight away. What, what, did you, what, what did your parents say? How did your wife react to it? She's trying to get validation about how her, his wife, like, just tell me that she went through this as well. Yeah, she did. Like, we've, we're all gone through it. I'm talking to a few of you about it. We were talking in the bar last night. The biggest, the biggest thing that you're going to have to deal with, the success and the money and the financial thing is going to take care of itself because you're all doing amazing. The bit that's going to collide eventually is you're going to live this life of financial abundance where you're going to make more than the average. And you probably could even have more time than the average. But you're going to crash right into something called rules and social norms and expectations. That this life is now in 2022. The financial Steve, the financial Carrie, the financial Stephanie is in 2022. But the thinking and the beliefs and the rules and what she thought was true is still in 2015. So the 2015 version of Stephanie is about to collide with the 2022 financial abundance. And that is hell. It's worse. It's absolutely worse, believe me. It's worse because now you've got all of this opportunity. You've got this money. You've got the ability to travel. You see the world differently. So you jumping on a plane and coming to Florida is like, it's just like going to watch a game. It doesn't mean anything to you. It's just, it's just easy. It's just what you do. But for somebody else, it's this ginormous event. What? You're going to Florida for four days? Yeah? What, you're traveling across country? You're, you're going to go through customs and you're going to like, go all that way? What, for three days? Yeah, yeah. I can't wait. In fact, I might only go for two. I might just land and go there and back on the same night. Why? Why would you do that? They don't get that and they never will get that. And I promise you, if I can share with you anything, that's, that if I can see into your futures, some of you are already there, many of you are. That's the bit you're going to have to deal with. That this financial thing that everybody teaches you, everybody's assuming that when you get the money and when you get the time, life's sweet. The problem is you've got all these people biting at your ankles everywhere you look, we're pulling you back to 2015 version of Stephanie. And they're all telling you all of these things that you can't do and you're like, well, I'm doing it. No, but you can't. You, you can't just go on a flight. Well, I am. I've been doing it for three years. You, you can't just like, walk away from it. I can't. I've been doing it for like, whatever. You can't just stop giving a shit. I, I do. I have stopped a long time ago. You can't be happy every day. No, I am. I'm, I've been doing it for like three years now. It's really cool. You should try it. You can't laugh when things go wrong. You can. I've been doing it for years. You can't just switch the TV off and not care about politics. I can. You can't make fun of... I do. It's, it's hilarious. It makes me laugh every single day. You can't do all of these things. You've, you've, you've got to care about trivial shit. It's somebody else's problem. I don't. And I've stopped. It's, it's liberating. You should try it. See, that's the problem with you, Paul. You just so self. You don't care about anybody else. There's fucking out I can do anyway. The best thing I can do is fix my own shit first. And when I've done it, I'll try and help you do it as well. If you want to. If you don't, fine. It's got nothing to do with me. But better that than not fixing my own shit, right? Forgive me if I'm cynical. But it appears to me what most people are doing 
is realizing they've got a load of fucking problems in their own life. Well, fuck this. I'll go and fix their problem over there. And it's all under the banner of being a socially responsible person and a caregiver and all of this other shit that people lay themselves. I get that. I get it. I get it. But make sure your own shit's fixed first. Your own insecurities is what I'm talking about. Your own fears, your own doubt, your own inability to get out of bed and do whatever to motivate yourself. To be a shining light, a genuine one, not a fucking energy suck that most people are. Most people are just walking around, plugging each in, into each other, umbilical cord style, sucking energy out of each other. Sucking the fucking life out of each other and bringing everybody back down to rules that are 100 years out of date. Rules that keep everybody stuck in conformity. Average lives, average incomes. One thing in common, conformity. The masses getting together. Everybody keeping each other stuck because it feels safe. That's how it was supposed to be 2,000 fucking years ago when there was lions on the planet. Not anymore. You're going to have to break a few rules. You're going to have to live a little wacky. If they're not accusing you of being a weirdo, you're probably doing something wrong. If they still know what you do at this point, you are doing something wrong. Natalie's response to what does he do? Drug dealer. <laughs> it's just fucking easier, exactly. Why waste 20 minutes of our lives trying to explain this? Could you imagine? How the fuck do I explain what I... I hire Bob the Builder lookalikes to come on stage. I get people doing the fucking YMCA at the end of my conferences. I plow them full of booze so they buy all my products and programs at the other end. Oops, sorry. Just give, just give away my secrets. <laughs> I sometimes go too far. I told you I'm committed to sharing everything. So it always works. So somebody's going to go, listen, because most people are literal. So somebody's going to go back to their office and just have jugs of margarita at the time of prescriptions. <laughs> yep. Have this before we have the conversation about the money and the plans of care and come back in an hour. And if you still haven't decided, pour another one. There's the information booklet that you won't be able to read. Just sign, just sign. But in all seriousness, the path that you're on the path that you're on, and it's the best thing I can share, you're going to hit a roadblock that will be not other people. And what will happen is you'll have to learn to have and coexist and realize that that's somebody else's thoughts, that's somebody else's belief, that's somebody else's way of living, and it's not yours. And the longer you get around people who go, that's normal, that's fine. So <laughs> I'm going to Sydney in January. Did you see the dates? I've got a baby due January the 19th. Cannot wait for Natalie's mum and dad to find that one out. <laughs> like, that's going to go down really well, right? In the house. Like, most people are not allowed to go to the fucking 7-Eleven with three weeks to go before a baby. Because what if something goes wrong? Ring 911. That's what it's fucking there for. It's what we pay our taxes for, isn't it? Now, 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 you're not quite sure if I'm exaggerating or telling the story right now. But the point is this. There's a, um, a specific set of circumstances behind why I'm very comfortable with going that I won't get into. But equally, we are both very, very comfortable with it and, and are aware that um, I was never going to be able to be in the country for various reasons at that period of time. And we both agreed that if and when something like this happened, and I couldn't be around, then I can't be around for that first 10 days. So I had a choice. I can go and sit here on my own for 10 days, or I can go and do something really, really cool for 10 days. The point, and this was the story, I spoke to somebody else about it in a group like this that I'm a part of, who went, that's great, I love it. What are you going to do when you get there? I said, I'm going to do this, I'm going to do this. I'm going to meet this person. It's like, yeah, like, sounds good to me, fantastic. When's the baby due? Oh, a week later. Great, just in time. But if I spoke to somebody else about that, and again, you can all take this whichever way you want. If I spoke to somebody else about that, I'd get all of them. <gasps> so I don't. I just choose, like James, get me a different doctor. Did you hear what he said? I don't, get me a different doctor. 
Get me one who understands this. Get me one who will, don't just say, no, you can't, you'll die. Get me one who says, here's the, the choices. Here's the things that you're going to have to do. If you do plan on making it, you must consider this, 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 and this. That just at least gives a choice for it to be possible rather than immediately going, oh, you can't. It's going to get harder for you to have conversations that will be about you living the life that you want, that is congruent to you, not to anybody else. And whether anybody else has got opinions on it in the room, no fucking interest in it whatsoever. Don't even bring it up to me. I'm very comfortable with it. She's very comfortable with it. That's all that fucking matters. Pay attention to that aspect of it, not the tactical point of it. That's happening in your life every single minute of every single day. Be very, very careful of who you talk to about what you want to do and how you want to live because it is true that 99.9% .9 of people will never, ever, ever get what you want to do or ever, much like James said, be prepared to make the sacrifices to get what you want. You're going to speak French to somebody who only under, uh, understands Spanish. Final thoughts before we wrap. The healthiest business owners are the ones who can scan all across the company. I got this from Marcus Lemonis last week. The healthiest business owners are the ones who can scan all across the company. They have a, an understanding of marketing. Not the best. You don't, need the, you, don't need the, you don't need to be an expert in it. Damon touched on it. I'm really good at this. But I kind of have to have an understanding of all of these other things. So I can't just have a world-class view of the PT department and then an, a, a below average, a D minus view of the finance department. I can't not have some understanding of how the marketing department works, about how the finance department works, the operations department works, the structure of the company works. I can't not have that. Somebody asked me in the finance day how I've, how I've got that. How did I get to the point now where I'm talking about finance and structure and money when in the beginning of what I did, it was all about marketing? I said, well, I was forced to. It was my job description. Like the consequence of marketing is I'd get sales problems. And the consequence of solving the sales problems is I'd need people. And the consequence of people is that I'd probably start running out of money. And the consequence of having people is I'd get a cultural problem. So I had to solve the problems in order for the business to grow. So what you see is this thing grows from 30 people to however many today is the accomplishment of understanding all of the different roles. And then being able to say, you do that better than me, but I get it. You do that better than me, but I understand it. You do that better than me, but I understand it. I think you've got to have a, at least an understanding of every division department in the company and be really, really comfortable with it. The belief that you've already mastered it is the reason that you've been held back. I've done it. I've I read the book on finance, that's it. I read, I read Dan Kennedy's marketing book eight years ago, that's it, I've done it. I've cracked it. I get it. I know it and I understand it. I hired somebody once. That's it. No more interviews. I just need to look at them now. What's your plan to make sure your ego doesn't get in the way? How do you stop that little gremlin? You don't need to do it. You don't need to do that call. You don't need to come to this event. You don't need to read that book. You don't need to get out of bed. You don't need to go to the gym today. You can have another McDonald's. Ah, it was McDonald's last night. Chick-fil-A is healthier. It's chicken. Confidence and self-worth comes from doing and following through on the things that you said you would do. That's where every ounce of confidence comes from. You're watching a guy get more confident in his life? because of that. Even hearing Anil today talk about, Paul said, I wanted to live in celebration. It was four years before I moved. The stars align looking back, not forward. Put yourself in the right place, enough times, commit to doing whatever you have to do. Good shit happens. Really, really good stuff happens to you. If you're lacking in a little confidence right now, 
you might have to own up to the fact it's because simply you're not doing the things that you say you would do, which goes back to James's point of discipline. Discipline and commitment. You can only develop confidence in yourself, literally, literally, within, with, listen to the word, within yourself. It doesn't come from anywhere else. It doesn't come from fancy cars. It doesn't come from expensive watches. It doesn't come from plastic surgery. It doesn't come from big houses. It doesn't come from all of these things that society is glamorizing right now. It comes from a boring place called within that you take wherever you go. I'm not happy in Florida. Let's try Australia. Well, if I take the same fucking stupid thoughts with me, it won't be long before I'm unhappy in Australia. Let's move to Florida. That'll make us happy. Really? Well, there's still a lot of miserable people in Florida, so that's not true. If it was true and that easy, everybody in Florida would be happy, although there are a lot of happy people in Florida. They're all drunk most of the, most of the time. Isn't that right, Wong? <laughs> <laughs> Literally within yourself. When did this come up? I'm not ready is when you are ready. The minute that, the minute that voice creeps into your head, you're in the game. That's, that's the time to move. The minute you are telling yourself, I'm not ready to do this, that's that bully coming out. That voice has just got bigger. Stay where you are. That's literally what's going on. Stay where you are. That's the voice of your parents. That's the voice of your grandparents and everybody who's gone before them. Just stay where you are. Who do you think you are? Just stay in our little pack. Stay with us. Stay in the masses. Don't get too big for your boots, as we'd say in England. Don't be a show-off. Don't dare think that you're different. You're just like us. Don't be coming back here with your fancy kitchens. All of that shit is going on in your head. The minute, the minute that you've, you've literally decided that that's what you want when you tell yourself, I'm not ready. You're telling yourself, li listen to it. Examine the thought process that's going on. You're bubbling up a thought that says, I want this thing. I want it. Like the real you is going, I want this thing. That's the entrepreneur. That's, I want it. Then somebody else kicks in and goes, but I'm not ready. Well, why don't we start? Let's just move. Let's go one step forward in the right direction. The quicker I start, the faster I'll get there. What you get doesn't make you happy. Long term, lots of pleasure. Difference between pleasure and happy. Most people are spending all of their lives doing pleasure, not happy. What they think is making them happy is making them pleasure. People with lots of pleasure, I see lots of pleasure. Problem is it doesn't last. Pleasure lasts for about 20 minutes. It's a thing you buy, it's chocolate, it's alcohol. It's a car, it's clothes, it's a holiday, it's pleasure. It's not happy. The reason the world's fucked when it comes to all of this is they don't even understand this. They're trying to buy happiness, they're buying pleasure. Pleasure stops. The new car, you loved it for the first week, then it's a complete pain in the ass when you have to start spending money on it and fixing it. It's not pleasurable anymore, it's a liability. But it worked for a week, so I'll do it again. That'll make me happy if I get a bigger one. Happiness, how grateful I am of the little things. I've got all of these really cool big things in my life, but look at all these little things. Look at these smiles I've got every day. Look at these kids that just walk into my life, randomly walking on stages. Look at this, when I pull in on a night and the kids want to come and give me a hug in the middle of playing Minecraft. Like everything else is a bonus. And you've all got that. I think maybe it's a little bit of a spotlight, a focus on those little things, paid a lot more attention to, and watch what happens everywhere else in your life. So we're all seeking freedom. Yeah, everybody agreed. And Neil talked about financial freedom. I think the common business owner, the, 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 sorry, the common uh, thing that a business owner is looking for is time and freedom. Would you agree? That's what we all think we're seeking. 
I'm going to challenge that. What about the freedom to fail? I put it to you, this is what you really want. Secretly, privately, in the dead of night, at three o'clock in the morning, you're walking downstairs, you open the fridge, the light comes on, you grab the milk, and you sit by the table. And you can't work out why you're confused. You thought it was time, you've got time. You thought it was money, you've got money. But you're still not happy. You're still not fulfilled. I put it to you all that this is what you really want. Freedom to fail, to not give a fuck. To express yourself, be whoever you want to be. Live however you want to live. Go wherever you want to go. Play however you want to play. To play, by the way. The freedom to play. To grow up and be a kid again. To laugh. To shrug your shoulders. Video didn't work. It's all right, we'll wait. What I'm basically saying is to not care. Whatever. It's not ideal, but it's not the end of the world. To live without judgment, primarily of yourself. The worst feeling in the world, the worst feeling in the world is the judgment that you have of yourself that comes from always thinking that you're never doing a good enough job for the other people looking at you. It's not just you who's living with it. Every single person in this room has got it. That self-judgment is the killer. And that's the, that's the horrible feeling that you're probably living with, that you're constantly thinking that you're never good enough because always there is somebody looking at you. But the reality is they're not. They're doing what you're doing, which is what? Judging themselves. They can't judge you. They're too busy judging themselves. That's it. At the end of the day, it, like we're all the same. To live without regret, how nice would that be? Could you imagine if you woke up tomorrow and went, oh, I've just freed myself of all the regrets that I've ever had. Imagine how much lighter you'd feel. It's like, oh, it'd be quite nice. Picture yourself. Picture yourself with your arms out, right? And a load of weights on the arm. There's one for regret. There's one for, for judgment. There's one for, oh, I can't play anymore, I'm an adult. There's one for, I better not express myself because like, I'm an adult now and I'm just not allowed to do this shit. Like, that's just not what people like us do. Imagine all of these weights. That's why you're tired. To live without fear, holding you back. I don't think, the only thing I would challenge a little on James' is thinking, and I mean it respectfully, I'm not too sure that it's possible to live without fear. The machine has been designed to keep you alive. Fear, you will never, ever get rid of fear. It is an absolute prerequisite of your living this life, to keep you alive. You live without fear. If you are fearless, you'll probably be dead. You'll walk in front of buses. That's the point of it. The point of fear is to keep you alive. But I do think you can live a fear-less life. Not less completely, fear-less. And the point of that is so that it doesn't hold you back without being self-critical. Imagine freedom from guilt. There's another way, guilt, there's another one. That's probably the biggest one of all. Imagine the ability to live your life without guilt, without carrying false responsibilities. What are they? Well, the biggest is that you're responsible for everybody else's happiness around you. There's another way, fuck, are you tired yet? You're carrying all this shit with you every day. Every single day, and you've done it for so long, you think it's normal. False responsibilities. I have to have all of this stuff. I have to do all of this stuff. I have to be all of this stuff. Everything's going to fail if it's not for me. If I don't do it, it's going to break. Jeez, I'm tired thinking about it for you. Imagine the freedom of living without peer pressure from my parents, from other colleagues, from the rest of the physical therapy community, all judging you online, having opinions on your logos and your marketing and what you say. And God, imagine that. Imagine a life where you didn't care who was in charge. Imagine all of the pent-up frustration and energy and oxygen that people would save if they didn't care what political party was in charge in any country. And imagine living without caring if you're right or wrong. 
That's the type of freedom that I've been committed to. And it's come as a direct result of investing time and money into myself, working on myself, and improving myself from within. The business, the separation, the business has been a wonderful vehicle to accelerate that growth and the expansion of Paul in everything that you see. And as a happy byproduct, I've made a few quid. But the best bit is the freedom on all of those things. I hope and hope and hope and hope that through this seminar, I've inspired you to live just as fearlessly and be okay with congratulating yourself for everything that you've done this far. Thanks for watching this video. And if you found it helpful, and if you now find yourself thinking, I wonder what else this person can help me with, head over to paulgoff.com forward slash books where you can find my best selling books, which will show you how to add more profit to your practice. Or send an email to paul at paulgoff.com to ask about how we can help you accelerate the growth and profitability of your clinic. And by the way, if you know anybody who would find this helpful, please share this video out. Thanks so much.